It was November 2013 when simmering tensions in Ukraine boiled over. Then President Viktor Yanukovych backpedaled on a major deal that would have strengthened economic and defense ties with Europe, opting instead for greater cooperation with Moscow. Thousands protested in the streets of Kiev, their numbers growing to 800,000, blurring the lines between demonstration and revolution. By February, Yanukovych had fled the capital, his administrative offices occupied by protesters, his parliament voting to remove him from power. For a moment, it seemed the crisis was over, but the pro-Western sentiment in Kiev wasn't shared in the south and east of the country where pro-Russian protests were taking place. By March, Russian-backed rebels had seized key positions in Crimea. On the 16th of that month, a Russian-backed referendum deemed illegal by the UN gave Crimean voters two options, leave Ukraine and join Russia or leave Ukraine and become independent. There was no option to stay as part of Ukraine. The Crimean Electoral Commission said nearly 97% of voters chose Russia. Regions to the east held their own referendums Separatist forces there battled the Ukrainian military on the ground and in the air. In July, what had been a regional crisis erupted. Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur was shot down over a rebel-held area of Ukraine. All 298 people on board from four different continents were killed. Western governments believe rebels used a Russian-supplied missile system like this to shoot down the jet, having mistaken it for a military aircraft. Ukraine says it was a Russian officer who pressed the button, but Russia denies that. Now, a truce between rebels and Ukraine's government was reached in September, but for those who continue to be caught in the middle of ongoing violence, the ceasefire may be worth as little as the paper it is signed on. Atika Schubert, CNN.